transition from competing as a junior to a senior, uh, it's very similar from you know the experience of going from elementary school to high school. And, and I had the support of, of the faculty and my principal and, and my teachers and the guidance counselor. And uh, reflecting back on that was, was such an important experience. Um, finally, when I ended up going to the Olympics, uh, you know, thinking back about all the challenges uh, that I experienced, um, I always reminded myself whenever I was going over to another country to compete that no matter what, I was going to come back with one of two things, either a gold medal or a lesson. And more often than a gold medal, I came back with a lesson or, or a bunch of lessons, um, which were actually, in hindsight, quite a lot more valuable than the gold medals. Um, obviously, I'm grateful for the opportunity to have won a few key races, um, but the lessons that I learned through sport and through competition, um, you know, they serve me really well these days. Uh, lessons like, like teamwork and how to focus on progress, how to focus on personal development and how to really take every experience as a learning opportunity. Um, and, you know, whether uh, it's a disappointing result or, or kind of a mediocre one, there's always something that we can learn every time uh, we experience one of those ups and downs. Uh, so I got to go to four Summer Olympics when I uh, got elected. I'm here in my office in Ottawa, by the way. We just finished a long round of voting. Since 3 p.m., we've been voting on back-to-back -back bills all day. And um, you can't see it because it's on my wall here, but uh, the Canadian Olympic Committee brought me some posters to put on my wall. There's an Athens poster of Beijing 2008, London 2012, and Rio 2016. And those are the four Olympics that I competed at for Canada. And uh, I won four medals and I got to carry the flag at the opening ceremonies and at the closing ceremonies. Um, I lost a couple of times. I won every color of medal and I got to hear Canada, oh Canada, when I was up on the podium. Um, I also got to go to the Olympics as a board member in Vancouver, and I got to go to the Olympics as a broadcaster twice as well in Pyeongchang and in Sochi. So I really got to run the gambit. You know, I got to do it all when it comes to the Olympic Games and to sport. And when I crossed the finish line in, in Rio at my final race that I decided, you know, sort of on the same day as I did it, that it was going to be my final professional race, um, I realized that I had a really wholesome, thorough career. And I was just overwhelmed with a sense of gratitude for that, for everybody that ever, you know, talked to me before and after a race, anybody that ever provided some coaching advice, uh, to all the parents at regattas who were, you know, making pasta salad so that we wouldn't be hungry after our races and doing the barbecues and packing up our boats and just helping out all the time. It's always a team effort, right? And reflecting back on that gratitude, I realized that I had a lot to be proud of, uh, but I had a lot to be grateful for too. And I also had the opportunity to travel quite a lot as an athlete. So, you know, I was also able to see sort of 360 how fortunate we are to be Canadian. Uh, both my parents immigrated to Canada in the 50s. And so I guess that makes me first generation Canadian or second generation Canadian or something like that. Um, but what I realized is that we can't take our great country for granted. It requires a little bit of building every single day. You know, it's not like a house that you build or like a pyramid, like, you know, you build a house or a building or something like that and you're done one day, you're complete. Countries aren't built like that. Countries require a little bit of work every single day. They require constant adjustments and progress. And when I got off the water in after Rio, I knew that I still wanted to be part of Team Canada. I knew that I still wanted to contribute to, to wins. I knew that I wanted to make sure that Canada was on the global podium, uh, whether that's in our uh, pursuit of a more equitable planet or a better, a fairer system in Canada for people. Uh, you know, fighting climate change is one of my biggest priorities and finding new solutions to ensure that uh, we do that in an equitable manner because we all know that climate change impacts the most vulnerable people in our community. But really nobody could have anticipated what we've been going through for the last two years. But that the very core of the reason why I got involved in in public service was to help people. And throughout this pandemic in the last two years, there's been an almost, you know, inexhaustible need for Canadians to get good advice, receive information, get supports, you know, benefit from really good government advocacy and have a representative that's been willing to listen. So um, I think everybody, uh, you know, on this call tonight knows what it's about, knows what it's like to stick up for people and stand up for what we believe in. Uh, making sure that our neighbors have what they need. And for me, that includes two things. 
the services that you all deserve, and the voice that you deserve in Parliament. And every time I stand up in the House of Commons, I remind myself that I'm speaking on behalf of all of my neighbours in Milton, and to 38 million Canadians. And uh, this is an honour and a privilege uh, that I am so grateful for, just like I was grateful to carry the flag at the opening ceremonies of the Olympics and kayak for Canada. I'm also very, very grateful to be a member of Parliament. I also, when I had the chance to reflect on on kayaking, maybe when I r retired, I, I hadn't really ever considered how strong a connection kayaking has to Canada's Indigenous communities. Um, but canoeing and kayaking are both, you know, we would say they're very Canadian. Uh, but in fact, canoes and kayaks are quite a lot older than the country of Canada. You know, Canada is a century and a half old. Canoes and kayaks have been around for millennia, for thousands of years. And they've been used uh, for transportation and for hunting and for um, all sorts of exploration, all sorts of things. And I got to use it um, in sort of a frivolous pursuit of a medal. Uh, but I also remind myself that the kayak, uh, in its Indigenous roots, something that I can be grateful for. I, uh, you know, usually when we do land acknowledgements, and I should acknowledge here in Ottawa, I'm on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin people. I also like to acknowledge that I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today without a vehicle called the kayak, which was an Inuit invention designed for something different than what I used it for. Uh, but that gratitude is important to me. Uh, I try to express a little bit of gratitude every day. Uh, so in closing, and before I go to a couple of questions, I just want to say thank you for your commitment to youth in our region. Thank you for making sure that kids have what they need, that vulnerable members of our community don't go without, and that, uh, you know, for those of you who work in education, thank you, because that is the most important, the most critical institution in society, ensuring that young people get the education that they need and deserve so that they can go on to be active, happy, healthy, productive members of society and produce uh, an even better country in the next generation. So thank you, merci. C'est uh, un grand plaisir de être ici avec vous tous et toutes uh, ce soir. Et uh, maintenant, uh, je suis heureux de prendre uh, les questions. Merci beaucoup.